Hello guys, in this video we will see the difference between injectables and non-injectables. Basically injectables are the uh, the classes or objects are instantiated one time and non-injectable they are every time you request them you get new ones. So this is like you have a singleton and this non-injectable is like a, a new object every time you request for it. Let's see with examples. So I have created this uh, module. This module has the controller and has a view and then we only have one template here. It's just a basic to show this page as you can see here on the on the front end. Uh, let's have some classes and see how we can apply the principles of injectables and then injectables so first of all let's have a model create a model and then inside it I will create a class called supplier and in the supplier we'll just create clear type namespace training injectable non injectable model class supplier so the supplier so the supplier will have a code and then we have two methods the set code and get code this will return void, get code will return a string, return this string, this code. So basically this is just a simple class. We'll have a code and then there's two methods, one to set the code and one to get the code. Now we have this class, we want to inject it and then display the content, the code from the uh, front end or on the front end. So to do this, I need to inject a, a view model here and then I will inject this class into the view model in order to get access to that supplier. If we just create a view model, so let's have a view model, view model example, not this one, have view model slash example, and then we will have the class, a namespace training injectables view model class example. This example will implement the argument into face and then in the constructor we will have the class. I don't want to put the class straight away into the view model but I will create services. So I will have a service. Service will have supply and then the type namespace training injectable service class supply and then it will have a supplier now if I put this as a supplier in the constructor and then initialize it then public function get supplier will return me a supplier now this supplier I will set the code here one two three ABC and then return this supplier. Now I will have this supplier inside the supply service inside the view model and then from the view model so just initialize it first and then will get me the supply get supply and we'll return a supply of course so return this supply. Now we have this view model will have a supply injected into it and the supply has a supplier injected into it. The supplier is just a model and then the view model need to be set to be injected into the uh, block. So we will go to the layout and the injectables index index here. So I will have a closing tag for the block and then I will have the arguments view model will be object and then copy the view model full name and put it in here now we have that what we need to do from the template we have a p tag and then I will create a input or I just uh, output the uh, text so this block get view model get supply get supplier get code so the view model has the supply object and then the supply has the supplier within it and then the get code now we have these what we need to do here now is just a flush cache cache flush layout block html and also i need to disable the full page so cache disable full page now the full page disabled now if I refresh here I get the ABC now I want to show you what happens if I use the same class again so 
the in the service there is a supply and it uses the supplier and then sets the code for it now if I use a demand class or service if I use a demand and then declare type namespace training injectable service class demand and this demand also has a supplier injected into it so supplier supplier and then we initialize it and also it has get supplier method and then return this supplier the difference in implementation for this one from the supply the supply sets the code but the demand doesn't set the code it just returns the supply now i will inject the demand into the view model so i will have demand demand and then initialize the class and then here public function get demand demand and then return this demand now I will use it in the template as I use this I will use it here again but instead of having the get supply I will say get demand now what happens if I refresh so let's refresh now you can see we have the same code one two three ABC for the supplier why this is happens why this doesn't give us a new instance because we only have injected this in here and then we set the code but on different service when you, we use the class again but we return it without setting the without setting the code it still have the code this is because this class is injectable we use it as injectable injectable will be the same class every time we ask for it for so we ask for it in the supply and it gets us the supplier from the initialized and injected the supplier from the constructor and then we set the code here and then we return the supply so in the first instance the supply doesn't exist then magento will create it and then saves it in the memory the second time in the demand class we ask for it magento finds this class already exists then it returns it returned it to it to us and finally in the view model when we ask for supply and demand because we ask for supply first in the template because we access the one from the supply then in the supply we set the code and when we say get code it will get us one two three ABC as in here the second time we ask for it Magento finds out that this class supplier is already created then it will get it to us and since the code is being set in this class then we still have the code in it this is not a, a typical usage for a stateful classes like this because this class we want to change the code every time we ask for it so this is why we cannot treat this class as a injectable because it has it has state it has properties and they need to be set and every time you ask for them they need to be different based on the requirement if that's the case you don't use these as injectables so you don't inject them as in here or in the supply as in here because they have state and if they have state every time you ask for them they will have the same state if you put them as injectable instead you want to treat them as non-injectable non-injectable is this the class but you append factory to it we will take an example on how to create a factory and make it non-injectable so in the model i will create a class called item and then namespace training tool model class item and the same thing we'll have a string code then public function set code as string code returns void of course this code equals code and then the get code now we will treat this item as a uh, renewable or non-injectable so to do this we will go to the demand and then we will inject item item and then we append factory to it then we say item factory and public function get item item 
and then return this item factory create so when you say create you will get a new object of the item now we have this item we need to import the item factory is not created yet but it will be auto generated for in the generated folder so this will get us the factory uh, class as a new class and the same we will have it on the supply so on the supply we will have item again same thing factory item factory then initialize it now we will have public function get item return item now item item factory create item set code item 246 so this is the code for the item and then return item now we need to have this as a factory now if i go to the template i will also ask for the item so get demand i want get supply and then get item get code now if i refresh the page i will get get item because in the supply the same with supplier but i set the code for the item here although this is a new object and is not like this as injectable this is renewable or non-injectable now what happens if i call for the for the item in the demand so if i come here and then just copy and paste let's see what happens get demand get item get code boom we will get an error this has nothing to do with the our implementation in magento wise this is a php thing so this is just a php so to fix this quickly it says there is a string code and it returns it as null but the return type is string so if we just put a default value here and then refresh it doesn't give us anything why because this is a new object and because this is a new object this object is different this item is different than the second item comes from the demand so the item comes from the supplier is different from the item comes from the demand because they are renewable because we created them through the object factory but this one also created through the object uh, manager they both created through the object manager but this one uses the method uh, what is called get and this use the method create the get will get you a singleton the same object the create will get you a new object every time you ask for an object now look at what happens if we try to change the factory so if we go to the training our training module and then go to the admin factory you can see we are creating this object which is what we have here and as a item now if we change if we look at the create method you see this there is a factory and is creating the type of this one so if you go to the create method and we should have in the develop, developer we are now you can see it returns a new type or it gets it through a reflection and then create the object out of the reflection so if you go here so you always get an instance from the reflection anyway so this is the create method we are not interested in here or we don't want to go deeper but let's try and see what happens if we say get instead of create if we refresh you will get the item 264 item 264 because this is treated now as singleton now whatever you put here in the demand supplier the object manager will get you the object from the get method but if you put a factory you will get it from the create method which is this one that's why you will see new object comes when you get the factory when you create it through the factory and you get the the same when you inject it as injectable in the constructor because in the from the constructor you will get get it as get method and when you add it in the constructor as model factory you will get it through the create method so the create method will get you a new object and the get method will get you the same object let's go to the get and see how this is implemented so you see here there is a model or object instance called shared instances shared instances the name is self-explanatory it says the shared instances yep it means 
it will get you the tag every time you ask for it. So if it is set, it will get it to you. If it doesn't, if it's not set in the array, then it's created for you. Once it's created, the second time you ask for it, it will get it to you from the array. So this is a registry like like a registry pattern when you save objects in a static or uh, not. This is not a static. Uh, when you save the instances in array now this is the main differences between the injectables and renewables or what is called injectables and non-injectables so when you have a class has a state you have to create it through the factory so you put like a supplier factory instead of supplier you have to append the factory to it if that's a renewable and it has a state every time should have a different state from the other object but if it doesn't have a state you will have it like this so this has a state it should be when it says stateful so it has a state every time it's created is different with different properties but if it is a stateless then it is injectable or is a shared instance now what's the examples of the shared instances the injectables or renewable which is the uh, non-injectable so if we go to the vendor and then from the vendor we go to magento in the magento i want to go to the catalog and in the catalog you will see there is a api and i will take an example of product repository interface or category so product so this product repository interface this is always stateless it doesn't have any properties it's just a method uh, it's just an interface or just a class if we go to the class as well we can see it here so it has those but it, it is the same they are not they're not changed every time you you ask for this class so they are they are okay to have it as one instance instance because it only gets you the save method so you save a new object into this every time and then it give you the get method you give you the get by id you get you these bunch of uh, methods but it's always the same class it doesn't need to be a new class so this is a typical example of how why you would have a injectable or a shared instance as this is what this is the one the product the product repository if we go to the model if we give you an example of a newable you will get in the resource model from the resource model you will have a collection resource model you will have product and in the product you will have a collection this collection will have a different properties every time you ask for it so you get it by collection factory also when you want to create a product uh, and then set it set its properties you also get it by product factory so if we go to the model uh, in the model level and then you will have a product now we have this product then you will get it by a factory you cannot use it as injectable this is always going to be renewable so these are the main differences between injectables and non-injectables and this is how you decide whether you have this class or this object and you want to use it as a shared instance or you want to use it in new instance every time you ask for it i think this is it and if you find this uh, video useful please like and subscribe and i'll see you in next video